Seventy fight news here. Floyd Mayweather Jr. versus the all-time greats, part three. Uh, first video was done by myself. Second video was done by the Brother Blood Boxing. The fourth video will also be done by the Brother Blood Boxing. Now, um, in this video, again, I'm going to go over some fights, different fighters, all-time greats, I think, uh, and, and just compare how I think Floyd would have done against those fighters. Now, we all have to understand something. Because we have to be very, it's a lot of adults out there, people in their 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s. However, a lot of you motherfuckers have the mentality of children. A lot of y'all cannot deal with other opinions, okay? And the problem with that is, you don't need to be on YouTube. If you can't deal with another person having a different view or opinion about something, especially when they're saying it in a respectful manner, then you need to just close your YouTube account. And go lock yourself in the closet and jerk off all day. Because that's the only thing you go that's the only place you're gonna find peace. Because in the real fucking world, people have different opinions. Okay? Now, listen, a lot of fighters, old fighters, I left out of this video. I'm not gonna talk about the Joe Gaines and all these guys because that's too far back for me to give a educated opinion about how I think they would do against Floyd Mayweather. If I put those fights up, I would just be lying to you. I would just be telling you what I've... My opinions would have to come from what I've read. What I've read about Joe Gaines and these guys. What I've, what I've read and researched about these old legendary fighters. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go too far back. Okay? Because what I know is he who writes history controls history. And I know that the people who have controlled history for the last few hundred years have distorted the facts that's a fact okay so I'm not going to look at these guys writings and say oh yeah well this guy apparently he had a 10 year run where he was the best ever so he must be able to beat Floyd bullshit I'm not I'm not that's not how I'm gonna do my shit I'm just gonna tell you right now so y'all can save those little comments I'm not no so let's get get started Willie Pep, let's dig into this brother. Willie Pep and Floyd Mayweather Jr. Okay. Willie Pep, no doubt about it, legendary fighter. Um, he's in most people's top 10 and uh, definitely in everybody's top 20 or 30 at least. But Willie Pep, you know, one of the greatest defensive fighters of all time, if not the greatest defensive fighter of all time, uh, that can be argued. Now, Willie Pep over 200 some victories, 10 or 11 losses, something like that. No doubt about it, hell of a fighter. But Willie Pep, I'm going to say this and I'm telling you, is there anybody in the YouTube boxing community who really thinks that Willie Pep would beat Floyd Mayweather? At featherweight, let's just say 130 pounds, super featherweight. Do you think anybody, do you think Willie Pep would beat Floyd Mayweather? Is there anyone in the world, in the galaxy, that thinks that Willie Pep would beat Floyd Mayweather Jr.? I highly doubt it. Willie Pep, while being a great fighter, he was great in his time, okay? He's not one of those fighters that can move to different times, okay? You know, Willie Pep would get dog walked by Floyd Mayweather. It would take Floyd two or three rounds to figure out his timing and his defense and then pepper his ass. He would make Willie Pep look like a bum. No disrespect to Willie Pep, but Floyd would make Willie Pep look like a bum. Okay? You guys watch these old fights and you get so fascinated. You get you get Woodies and shit watching these old fights in black and white and you think that because the fight is in black and white and the video is shaky that somehow, oh shit, this, these are the great old days. Nobody can beat these motherfuckers. I can take Arturo Gotti. And Mickey Ward, put these motherfuckers back in the 1920s, and I guarantee you they will be talked about today as legends. They will be in everybody's top ten based off of their fighting styles and the, and the bullshit stories that get written about, the legends that get, get attached to these great, uh, these old-time fighters. These writers will attach legends to them, and they will pass down from generation to generation. And then you have these guys fighting... You know, they they fighting like four and five times a month, 
okay? Four and five times a month. Look at the level of competition you would have to have been fighting to fight four or five times a month. Don't talk about toughness now, because even if I move to the 70s, imagine Muhammad Ali fighting Joe Frazier on Saturday. The next Saturday, he has a rematch with Joe Frazier. Then the next Saturday, he has a, a fight with uh, Ken Norton. And then the next following Saturday, he fights George Foreman. He wouldn't be able to do that shit because the level of competition is elite. He would be hurt. He would have need time to recover. These dudes were fighting fights four, five, six times a fucking month. That tells you they're fighting bums. And it's easy to look at their records and say, whoa, they had a million fights. Whoa, blah, 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 blah. Look closer. Look at who they were fighting. Don't pick out two and three big names. Look at deep into who they were fighting, guys. Look deep into that, and I guarantee you, you're going to find a hundred motherfuckers you never heard of. Never heard of them. People with 30 fucking losses and, and 30 wins. That's what you call padding your record. But somehow we forget that when we're talking about the old black and white shaky film fighters, and we can only see it today. Floyd Mayweather cherry picks his opponents. Okay, I got a lot of those comments and a lot of those messages. Floyd is cherry picking his opponents. Okay, first of all, there was a time in Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s career when he was 130 pounds and he was the best fighter in the fucking world. Okay? Even though he didn't get the credit at that time because Roy Jones and, and other people were doing their thing still. But Floyd Mayweather at 130 pounds, when he was out there calling out all these guys, Costa, Zoo, uh, fucking De La Hoya, Mosley, uh, Joe Casamayor, he was trying to fight all these guys and nobody wanted to fight him. Even the HBO commentators were saying, oh, it's not worth it for them to fight this guy. Floyd doesn't have no fan base. Look at the risk versus the reward. It's not worth it for them to fight him. So they justified Floyd getting ducked. So Floyd, he has an ego. So he was pissed off. He remembered that shit. And when he got a chance to make him some big money, he took those fights. And then when he became the number one star, the number one cash cow in boxing, what happened? All of the fucking bums who ducked him when he was a beast, now all of a sudden they want a chance to fight him now. Because they're on their last leg and they want a, la a paycheck like Shane Mosley. Okay? Now they want to fight him now. So Floyd remembered that. He said, fuck y'all. I'm not fighting you bums. Fuck you. You wouldn't fight me when I, want to, when I needed a paycheck. Now I'm not helping you motherfuckers out either. That's what Floyd did. He didn't even want to fight Shane Mosley. Because he knew Shane just wanted a paycheck. And he knew Shane ducked him. So he didn't want to fight Shane Mosley. But he went on and fought him anyway because the people were saying he was ducking him. And then you see what he did to Shane Mosley. Okay. Also, if you look at Miguel Cotto... Tony Margarito, listen, Miguel Cotto was ringside when he witnessed the massacre of Arturo Gotti. He wanted no problems. He wanted no problems. That's, you never heard uh, Miguel Cotto running around talking about, let me give me Floyd Mayweather. I want Floyd Mayweather. You never heard it. He don't want them kind of problems in his life. Now, let's move on to Felix Trinidad. Felix Trinidad for some reason, always gets overlooked in boxing conversations. I don't understand why, but he, he always get overlooked. Now, Felix, to me, is one of the best welterweights of all time. At welterweight, it was few men that could stop Felix Trinidad. However, Floyd Mayweather is one of those men who would have stopped him. Um, I think that Floyd Mayweather would have exposed, he would have exposed Felix Trinidad Okay, he would have outboxed him. He wouldn't have stood toe to toe with Felix Trinidad. He would have moved and danced around Felix Trinidad. Um, I do see Felix Trinidad possibly dropping Floyd in this fight. You know, possibly. I see him because he has he had a mean left hook. You know, what I'm saying really qu quick and sharp left hook. I think Felix could have could have dropped Floyd, but I think Floyd uh, that that drop would have probably came in the first or second round. You know, and then Floyd would have come back and won a unanimous decision. All right, that's just my opinion. Um, look at uh, Sandy Sadler. Okay, now, a lot of people have been asking me about him. What do you think he would do, Sandy Sadler, against Floyd? This is another guy, all-time great, but I, I can't compare him to Floyd Mayweather. I can't say that he would beat Floyd because this guy lost the competition that was that's not even uh, on Floyd's level at all. Now, he did beat 
Willie Pep. And he managed to beat Willie Pep in the middle of a losing streak he was going through, but he still beat Willie Pep. That just goes to show you, once again, why Floyd would whoop Willie Pep. But anyway, that's a, I think that's an easy fight for Floyd uh, versus Sadler. Um, let's look at uh, Salvador Sanchez, okay? Salvador Sanchez versus Floyd Mayweather. Now, of course, these fights. This fight is at uh, at uh, 130 pounds. Okay, I don't really do the super middleweight. I mean, super featherweight, featherweight shit. You know, it's all the same thing to me. You know, say so you're talking about four pounds difference. But I think this is a very competitive fight, entertaining fight. I think uh, Salvador Sanchez, of course, has to be the second greatest featherweight of all time, behind Floyd Mayweather, in my opinion. Um, you know. I think that this is a competitive fight, and I think that this fight goes to a split decision. I can't call who wins the fight. You know what I mean? You know, I could say Floyd wins the fight, you know, but at the same time, I don't know. In my heart, I really don't know who will win that fight. So I'm just going to call that a draw. Salvador Sanchez and Floyd at 130 pounds, I'm calling it a draw. All right? Now, um, Azuma Nelson, this is an excellent fight. Okay, um, even if you have this fight at 130 or 135 pounds, this is a, a, a beast of a fight. Azuma Nelson will put a lot of pressure on Floyd. He gave Pernell Whitaker hell. Okay, I still watch that fight to this day, Pernell Whitaker versus Azuma Nelson, because that's one of my favorite fights, man. That he was all over Pernell. You know what I'm saying? He put the pressure on him. Now he would have did the same thing to Floyd. You know what I'm saying? Azuma was a beast. Now I do see Floyd winning a split decision against Azuma Nelson. Possibly a unanimous decision, depending on circumstances, but I see Floyd winning a split decision against Azuma Nelson. Um, Charlie Burley. Floyd Mayweather versus Charlie Burley. Um, right now, I'm going to tell you, I have this fight. Either a unanimous decision victory or a split decision victory for Charlie Burley. Because Charlie Burley... Um, his style was so awkward. He was the Roy Jones Jr. of his day. Imagine Roy Jones Jr. Before, Just erase from your mind all the knockouts. I'm talking about Roy Jones Jr., prime Roy Jones Jr. Imagine that guy, okay, never getting a title shot. What if Roy Jones never got a title shot, okay? History would try to forget him from boxing. That's what they tried to do to Charlie Burley. I have Charlie Burley beating Floyd. That's just my opinion. Uh, I think that he was too awkward of a fighter, um, and he would have confused Floyd. Um, I think it would have been a long, boring fight, but I do think Charlie Burley would have pulled it out. I could be wrong. Remember, this is all opinion-based, okay? If you have a different opinion, good for you. Leave a comment, whatever. Keep it respectful, all right? No need for people to act like you're married to these fucking fighters, all right? Now, uh, also, before this video ends, all right, Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, this is a guy who has 39 fights, you know, you know, 39, well, 36 wins and like three losses, something like that. Now, this is a guy who relied on his legs, okay? He relied on his legs. Once his athletic ability left, he did not have the skill set to continue to fight like Floyd Mayweather does. Floyd Mayweather is fucking going to be 35 years old and still fight. He's not even in his prime no more. Okay? Some people disagree with that, but Floyd hasn't been in his prime to me since he fought Oscar De La Hoya. And yet he still continues to win fights because he is far superior skilled than these other fighters. Roy Jones, uh, Ray Leonard, those guys relied on their athletic ability. And once the athletic ability diminished, what happened? Okay? Sugar Ray Leonard, 33 years old, get losing this shit, and everybody, oh, he's he's done, he passed his prime, oh, he's just, okay, well, if he done that early, then give, this motherfucker had rest just like Floyd had rest. He took three years off, four years off, oh, he had eye surgery, oh, shit, Margarito had eye surgery, too, he came right back and fought the same year, so what you saying, Margarito tougher than, than Ray Leonard, come on, y'all, but that's just my opinion, 78 fight news, y'all look out for Part four from the Brother Blood Boxing. Holla.